All right, guys, welcome to the video. Anthony here, Special Analysis. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Going to talk about uh, this crazy crude ride from this morning. So, uh, market's been in an upward trend, which many of you are aware of. If you've been tuning into these videos, we kind of made a topping pattern here that I felt may have held. Okay. Because you're going to go, why are you trying to short a trending long market? Well, I'm going to explain to you, right? Like, there's got to be logic between, you know, why, right? For why I want to try to short this market. So, we push up. Um, we break 82 again up here, 82.30. Higher time frame resistance, 82.40, which we failed at on Friday. We did push as high as 82.70. You can see right now we're at 82.90 and climbing roughly. Headed probably towards 83. At the moment, heavy liquidity resting at 83.16. So, if you notice, we placed a slightly higher high while our cumulative delta was dropping. So, there was a divergence here between cumulative delta and a slightly higher high. Now, this was not a massively higher high, but it was slightly higher. So, we push down. We find some support. You can see I marked off some levels here. Um, that I was, you know, looking at. You could see me marking off the lower highs, um, the higher lows, so on and so forth. So really like this setup here, 730. Get short. I'm targeting 8180. This candle here pushes as low as like 8186, and it immediately reversed. So notice that where I'm trying to get short is an area where. There should now be resistance because it did previously serve as support. So as soon as I'm entering and as soon as this position starts pushing, I take my stop, I move it to my entry, and you know I see if I'm gonna if I timed it correctly. So I did that here, I did that again here, and I did that again here. So every as soon as the market moved in my favor, I tightened my stop because I knew I was fighting the overall trend, hoping I was going to be right now there was evidence to suggest that the market could potentially reverse at these levels um, you know which I will screenshot and put inside the blog so you could see exactly what I was looking at but obviously this trend did hold a little stronger than anticipated so after that we got a really aggressive push through the prior high and then we had some inverse delta come in here so we had a lot of net selling in the following candle now the push higher more than 50 percent of the positive delta was in the top two ticks so i knew that that was probably going to lead to a difficult um some difficult follow through especially with this next candle exhibiting significant um selling delta so I, that's where I gave it one more shot. I'm like, listen, maybe this is where we get short. Um, there was evidence between these two candles that led me to believe that. We tested this trend line. We pushed through this prior high, consumed some liquidity resting here at 82.50. Uh, and ultimately, we did finally reverse getting that 81.80. I mean, fourth try was a charm today. Unfortunately, it was just a game of kind of playing here. We were in a consolidative state. Um, there was the VWAPs kind of running through this area. I felt like it may hold. Um, and the reason I just had this confident feeling was because of this, you know, prior push through this initial high at 305 and then the next run at 425. And I thought that maybe that Delta divergence there was going to do it. It did not. So I got stopped. I got stopped. I got stopped. And it finally played out for me. So for that, it was a relatively stressful morning because you're just reapproaching the same tactic over and over and over again, not getting a better result. Well, I normally, um, you know, would would have probably stopped trading after three attempts because I didn't take or suffer any losses because the market did go in my favor at least a little bit. I was still break even for the day, right? I mean, I was only kind of eating commissions here and when I push my stop I push it a tick or two in the profit just so that I don't you know I'm not losing at least the the round trip in and out of the market 
So finally we get this this final push up here and, and that's really what kind of eluded this push to the downside into what I was looking for which was 8180. From that area we reversed heavily and then we've now made a new high here for the session. Whether I'll continue to watch this or not, I'll, I'll just, I don't know. I'm kind of burnt out, in all honesty. So, you know, when I start to feel that way, probably best to step away from the market rather than trying to um, trying to re-engage. I don't know that I will. If this does create a very predictable topping pattern um, that I feel like I could maybe kind of draw it back lower, perhaps I will. Um, I did have lower objectives here, but 8180 was the target that each one of these entries, uh, you know, I was looking for, finally got it. I just called it kind of quits there. <clears throat> like I said, entering four trades is probably a little more than what's normal for me. Just the fact that I, I still was at draw um, when this last setup here kind of occurred, and uh, that's why I took it. Now, normally I don't like to try to, to short a newly appointed high um, or buy a newly appointed low, only because that can sometimes be devastating, right? But I'm going to give you uh, an image inside the blog post about these two candles, why I believed, because you know more than 50% of the delta resided in the top two ticks that this candle was heavy up top, right? There were a lot of trapped orders up here. Probably what happened was people had orders, you know, resting above this high from earlier, and ultimately they got filled, right? So if they were if they got short here, um, you know, this push through probably gobbled them up. There was layers of liquidity here at 30, 40, and again at 50. Um, and I guess there was a good chance that this kind of had, had a spot to roll over. Again, with these trades, I wasn't risking very much um, because I was entering them basically at the highest of the candle, trying, trying to see if the push was going to transpire. And then very quickly, like I said, advancing that stop. And I did the same thing here. You know, very quickly my stop was advanced. Had it gone against me, I would have just got stopped out again at break even. Um, and, you know, that's the benefit of trying to be able to time the entry a little bit that you kind of get a quick feel for, hey, can I move my stop? Because for me, once my stops at break even, the fight's over. Like, I don't care what happens next, right? You know, the worst case scenario, there's going to be some slippage through my stop. Maybe I lose a tick or two. Um, I'm going to pay a round trip commission. That's it. Like, I don't, I don't really care um, because it's just such an insignificant amount of money. So when you do get something that runs, you know, 40, 50 ticks, like, the little bit of commission and slippage I suffered before didn't mean much. So we'll see what the balance of the day has. We had news this morning, um, opening bell at 9.30, news at 9.45, news at 10 o'clock. We had a beautiful trend in gold earlier the, in the morning um, prior to the session during the overnight. Really nice. Then gold got kind of choppy. Indices not working as nice as we want them to. This is a federal holiday week. It is 4th of July on Thursday. Um, while the, the futures market will be open, you know, the market will be open on Friday, I imagine this is a week that a lot of people step away, um, and that's totally fine, right? Uh, Wednesday's going to be littered with news all morning long. I don't even think I'm going to trade Wednesday morning because it's just going to be three hours of frustration, right? Like Powell speaking, got FOMC meeting minutes later in the morning. Like, I, I, don't, I don't need three hours of aggravation, right? Like, it just... When those kind of days occur that you can predict from experience knowing, hey, we're going to get littered every, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 9.45, 10 a.m., 2 p.m. When you're going to get that much news, it's probably just better to take the day off. So I think I'm going to treat myself to a, a five-day weekend. I haven't officially decided. Um... But that's probably where I'm headed and the thought process I'm going in simply because if I'm just going to come to the market to get aggravated because we're getting whipped around by news. And I'm not a news trader, okay? Like, I, I'm not a news trader. If I can't identify a low-risk spot that I can get into the market that isn't going to be affected by a news release, that I can get my stop to break even as quickly as possible, you know, today's a prime example. 
Stop out, stop out, stop out. Finally, the market did what I was looking for it to do. Right? But again, what did I suffer here? I didn't suffer a big loss. right? I suffered a tiny loss, a tiny loss, a tiny loss. And when I say tiny loss, again, maybe slippage of a tick or two, um, my round trip in and out commission fee, like those are not big losses, right? Those are just, yes, they were repetitive. Yes, it was frustrating. But yes, as I continue to identify areas that I believed could have provided resistance based on the way this high was placed that I was looking to get short, okay? Um, and like I said, I'll image these kind of in the blog post there, particularly the one that worked out so you can see exactly what I was seeing. But I'll show the other ones too. Why? Because it's a learning experience, right? Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna go down this road of understanding order flow, um, you're gonna need to basically uh, start endeavoring into understanding what works and what doesn't work. Now it's not for everybody, right? Like you can just continue to trade, you know, pure technicals the way that you know most people trade. That's fine. Um, I've integrated order flow over. The last couple of years, I've only started talking about it very recently because it took me a while to fully understand it. I continue to trade my prior trade plan um, until I was able to prove that the order flow was able to give me some form of advantage over my um, prior trade plan. So that's just the way I went about it. Um, I don't necessarily think everybody needs it, uh, but if they want to learn how to do it, it's just a, it's a, it's a time investment, right? Like anything else, it's just a time investment. Um, you have to employ your traditional trade plan and then say, hey, how does the order flow fit into it if it does or doesn't, uh, and then make that decision for yourself. But that's how I played it today. Um, again, a frustrating morning, you know, three stop outs in a row, while they were relatively insignificant, you know, every trade you place, you are assuming some form of risk um, of where you are initially placing your stop loss, right? So each one of these did have some risk associated with it until the market started at least moving in my favor. And then as I tried to tuck and tighten those stop losses, unfortunately, they got knocked down. But uh, this one finally did, right? Like we had super, super strong buying here, right? On the 945 candle, you can see down here at the volume, super strong buying, all right? And then uh, the next candle here, while it was much smaller, exhibited a high level of selling delta. And again, I'll, I'll image those and I'll show you where the high buying delta was in this push higher and why I believe that there was a good chance that we were gonna get stuck. And if I was wrong, I was risking a handful of ticks, right? Um, but as soon as the market went in my favor, I moved my stop just a tick or two into the profit. And again, whether I got stopped out for a fourth time or not, it is what it is. It's part of the deal, you know, you have to have endurance when it comes to doing this business because the market's not always going to do what you want it to do. And today was a prime example of that, why I felt like we were still going to retest this support area. And I wasn't wrong, it just my timing was wrong, right? But I was diligent in continuing to do what I needed to do to try to partake in that move that I believed was going to transpire. It just took me four tries for the market to finally do um, what I had transpired, you know, or, or what I had expected to transpire. Again, frustrating morning. It is what it is. Um, this push to the downside here more than made up for the little losses incurred along the way, and, and I'm out. So I don't think I'll place any more trades today. I, I will monitor the market for a little while longer. We'll see how we do up here. Um, I am looking at some liquidity resting a little bit higher here, 83, 15, 16 roughly. So we may run at that and then see if we, we pull back here towards, uh, you know, towards point of control. But I'll see, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, if it, if it doesn't transpire, it doesn't transpire, I'm not terribly worried about it, right? Like I'm, I'm content. I more than made back the little losses I took and, and, and finally got some profit on the move that I was expecting all morning, it just, it fought me, okay? And those, those days are going to happen. Um, and you're gonna have to stay level-headed and you're gonna have to stay even keel and you're gonna have to go, all right, listen, I interpreted that the market was gonna push here. It didn't, poop happens, right? And I'm gonna just be ready for where I believe I could try to place another low-risk entry 
And if the market finally does it, then great. If it doesn't finally do it, then I have to be ready, willing to be patient to see when or if it's going to transpire. So that's kind of the scoop. Like I said, gold had a beautiful rally earlier this morning. Um, it just unfortunately ran out of steam right about when we got together. It reversed pretty aggressively. Indices were kind of choppy. They placed a weird high. Um, unfortunately, that also is kind of what it is. This is a federal holiday week. We do have news. To, we did have news this morning. We will have more Tuesday. We will have more Wednesday. And then we will have more Friday uh, after the holiday. So for those of you who do plan to trade this week, I do encourage you to be extra patient. Be, you know... There may be a lot of market participants that step away. We may not get great trending conditions, or we may, right? Like, there, it, it, there's not ever a rhyme or reason. It's just, hey, can I interpret what the majority of other traders' intention is, and then can I partake in that, right? I believed that we were going to retest 81.8. Right? Right? I just, I believe that was the intention of the market. Based on my own assumption, based on my own analysis, I believe we were going to retest 8180. Okay? That's what I believed. And, and in that belief, I identified low risk areas that I believed could have pushed me towards that 8180. Okay? So when you come to the market, your analysis has to lead you to a belief, right? And then you have to see if you can now find a low risk spot to partake in that belief. Sometimes it will happen, sometimes it won't. What's your number one job? Right, capital preservation. My number one job every time I believed the market was going to push lower here into this prior high or this failed high, my number one job, my only job that mattered was can I preserve my capital along the way? And if I'm able to preserve my capital along the way, then I did my very best job. Right? It doesn't mean I'm not going to get stopped out, it doesn't mean I'm not going to take small losses. It doesn't mean the market's not going to cooperate. It just means that I didn't blow up my account in the process of getting to what I believed was going to transpire. Right? Had I got stopped out here right, and the market continued to go higher, well, then maybe I would have continued to participate in that direction or maybe I wouldn't have. I don't know because I, that scenario didn't come to fruition. Right? But I knew that I was focused on this high and the way it failed that I believed that we made a push that we would eventually retest this level, right? It was 81.79 to be specific. My target was at 81.80. I just believed the market was gonna return there based on what I saw in the given point in time. So I did my best job to lose as little as possible until what I believed was gonna transpire, transpired, right? My analysis led me to believe that even if we were going to go higher, we were going to retest this level, 81.80 first. Right? And that's exactly what we got. But it didn't happen quick. It didn't happen easy. And it wasn't pretty. Right? Ugly, ugly, uglier finally happened. Right? By the time we got here and it worked out, I was like, oh, finally. Like It just took all, took all morning. But that's okay. It is what it is. Right, guys, it is what it is. And again, the whole reason I believe the market had some opportunity to push lower was because of the way this prior overnight high failed. Right? Like we had we made a high, we consolidated, we worked a trend line, we made another high, and then we crapped the bed. There was again a little bit of cumulative delta divergence here. You can see that from this first high we were dropping to this from this first high to second high in price we were rising. That's what led me to believe the market had the potential to go lower. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, of course, feel free to leave a like. If you have a, a question, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, if I can help you in any way, I'll leave my email below. If you'd like to join me live in the market as we look at the NASDAQ, uh, S&P 500, crude oil and gold, we do that every single morning. Uh, I provide you with high level uh, analysis for um, the markets that I personally look at, which is the S&P and crude oil. Um, more focused on crude oil, but I provide the same analysis. So because I know that there are millions of traders out there that trade the S&P 500 every day, 
So I do do in-depth analysis on the S&P 500. Uh, also put together a bunch of stock ideas, futures, forex, cryptocurrencies, things of that nature. Um, we also talk a lot about order flow, liquidity, and things of that. So if those are things of interest, I'll leave a link below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. God bless and have a beautiful day.